Hi everyone, welcome to this business topic video which is going to provide an overview, uh, an introduction to the important topic of liquidity ratios. Let's just first of all explain what a liquidity ratio is compared with all the other financial and other ratios that you may have come across such as profitability or efficiency ratios. Liquidity is really all about the ability of the business to be able to pay amounts that it owes when they're due. So does it have the cash or other assets that enables it to pay its current liabilities? Liquidity is all about cash flow. As a result, the kind of information you need to calculate liquidity ratios is largely going to be found uh, not from the income statement, which is uh, looking at the income and expenditure of a business over time, or the cash flow statement, which, look, which looks at the historical movements in cash. The information you need for liquidity ratios is going to be drawn from what's known as the statement of financial position, or, or as it's more commonly known, the balance sheet. The balance sheet is this snapshot of what the business owns or is owed, which is the assets, and what it owes to others, which are the liabilities. So the, the concept of liquidity essentially requires you to consider and compare two different types of information from the balance sheet, the current assets of the business and compare them with the current liabilities of the business. Let's just quickly look at what we mean by current assets and current liabilities. Perhaps one of the most common current assets of a business is the cash, the cash in hand or the cash in at the bank that the business has. Most businesses operate with at least some cash in the bank. But of course, there are two other main types of current asset. There is the stock or the inventories that are held by the business perhaps at the warehouse, perhaps as work in progress, or raw materials that are flowing through the production process for a manufacturing business. So a lot of businesses, particularly manufacturing businesses, hold significant stocks, as of course do retailers and wholesalers. And thirdly, and this happens in just about all businesses of any major size, you've got amounts that are owed to the business by customers known as trade debtors. These are customers who have been allowed to have sales, allowed to have the product in return for agreeing to pay their invoices uh, a little bit later, trade debtors. So those are the three main categories of current assets. And what we need is those current assets to be enough to be able to pay what the business owes, which are known as current liabilities. Uh, two main ones to look out for. Firstly, of course, and this again is, is common in most businesses, amounts that are owed to suppliers. So in this case, uh, we typically call these trade creditors, where the supplier has provided us with some goods and services, we owe them the money, and we should be paying that, that, that invoice from the supplier at the right time, at some stage in the future. The second uh, current liability to look out for, and this can happen at the same time as a business having cash uh, in hand or at the bank, is an overdraft facility, or an overdraft amount owed to the bank which uh, in theory is repayable on demand and therefore needs to be included in current liabilities. So we can see we compare current assets with current liabilities and the concept of liquidity is to see what the relationship is between the two of them. Let's uh, look therefore at a really simple example just to show you how the main liquidity ratio, which is known as the current ratio, how that is calculated. So in this case, we've got a very simple business and this is a snapshot of some of the information from the balance sheet. Uh, the balance sheet date, it had cash in hand of £10,000. It was holding uh, stocks or inventories at a cost of £30,000. That's tied up in, uh, in stocks. And it was also owed £60,000 by its customers. Trade debtors of £60,000. On the other side of the equation, amounts that the business needs to pay out at some stage in the future, it owed its creditors likely to be suppliers, £45,000, and it also had a £5,000 bank overdraft money it had effectively loaned from the bank. That's our simple example. Let's now have a look at how we calculate the most popular, the most common liquidity ratio. It's known as the current ratio, and it's really easy. All you do is you divide current assets by current liabilities. So add them all up together to start with. So our cash of 10, our stocks of 30, our trade debtors of 60 gives us total current assets of 100,000 pounds. 
So we add together the current liabilities of the uh, the trade creditors of 45 plus the bank overdraft of five. That gives us total current liabilities of £50,000. And the way you calculate the current ratio is really easy. You divide one by the other. Current assets over current liabilities. 100 divided by 50 should, even with my maths, give you the answer 2. So the current ratio is 2. In other words, current assets are twice the level of current liabilities. Well, that's your ratio calculated, but I guess the most important thing is what does it mean? Now, the textbooks will all describe this in different ways, but essentially most businesses would want to have a positive current ratio of more, more than one. In other words, they've got current assets that are at least enough to be able to pay the amounts that it owes. And typically, a ratio of between one and a half, two and a half, maybe one and a half to three would suggest that actually the business is in decent position in terms of liquidity. It's got enough current assets to uh, to pay the bills as they fall due. By contrast, a, a low current ratio of below one might suggest that the business is struggling to pay its uh, pay its current liabilities. Um, of course, it's possible to have a very high current ratio and that also to be a problem. So a uh, current ratio of say five, six, maybe 10 would suggest that there's far too much capital invested in the business, perhaps tied up in, in excess stocks or we've allowed our trade debtors, our customers, to take too much credit. The key thing about top grade evaluation of using the, uh, the current ratio is to just think about what the number means in context. So, for example, it, depending on which business or, or industry you're looking at, the current ratio will vary. Take a look at uh, major manufacturers or businesses that are involved in long term contracts. They often have a substantial amount tied up in work in progress and inventories. Uh, in some industries, it's very common for customers to be given long periods to pay their debts and therefore trade debtors tend to be very high. Um, so the key issue is what type of business are you looking at and what are the typical levels of the current ratio? And also, how does that ratio compare with competitors? Because that will give you an indication as to whether a business is, is competitive in terms of its liquidity position. The other key thing to remember is, is to look out for the trend. So don't just calculate the ratio, uh, the current ratio at one point, calculate it over a series of periods and see whether it's going up or down because a sudden deterioration in the ratio could be a good indication that the business has got some cash flow problems. That's the current ratio. And I think for most exam boards, that is uh, currently the, uh, the, the, the most, certainly the most popular. And in some cases, the only liquidity ratio you're required to know. So check your exam board. Uh, but you may also come across this one, which I'll just mention briefly for a minute or so. And it's known as the acid test ratio. And don't worry about the name. It's really a very simple ratio, it's the current ratio, but you make one small adjustment. What is different about the acid test ratio compared with the current ratio is that you eliminate the current asset that is typically hardest to turn into cash, and that's inventories. So you imagine cash is easy, that's cash, and trade debtors, you just get them to pay. But with stocks and inventories, you actually have to uh, turn them into a sale and then perhaps wait for that sale to be paid for you. So inventories can be typically quite difficult to turn into cash uh, in, in the short term. So the acid test is, if you like, a, a more stringent test of liquidity. But then you then compare it with exactly the same current liabilities that you uh, that you had calculated with the current ratio. So if we did that with our simple example, uh, do you remember we had 100,000 of current assets, but of that 30,000 pounds was tied up in inventories or stocks. If we take those out of current assets and divide by 50,000, we see that the acid test ratio is less than two, as you would expect. It's 1.4. Uh, how do you evaluate this? Well, I guess the same comments as we made a few minutes ago are also true, that uh, you've got to understand what type of business you're looking at. For some, taking inventories out of current assets has a very significant impact on the ratio, on the acid test ratio, but for service businesses, almost no impact because very few services service businesses uh, hold a lot of stock. So you've got to look out for what type of industry it is, but also uh, not be too concerned if it's uh, if, if the ratio is poor, but the business has a high stock turnover. So supermarkets typically operate on a quite a low current ratio and acid test ratio, but it's not a problem for them because they're constantly turning that high level of stock over. 
uh, through sales and in particular turning it into cash. So there we go. That was a brief introduction to liquidity ratios, the most important of which is the current ratio. And in other topic videos, we'll take a look at how we can use liquidity ratio information to help identify ways of improving the cash flow of a business.